This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So let's go through and have a look at the example all about fair value adjustments. So as you can go through and see at the bottom of the page, uh, if we go through there and scroll down, uh, what we can see there is that there are three parts to the requirement, aren't there? Uh, first of all, it wants us to work out the value of property, plant and equipment uh, to be included in the consolidated statement of AB at the 31st of December X5. So if it's the AB group, I assume that AB is the parent. Uh, also wants us to work out the value of goodwill, isn't it? Again, at that same 31st of December X5 date. Again, remember, if we're thinking about goodwill, we're thinking there, aren't we, about working number three and how we lay that out. And then tricky little one at the end, it wants us to work out the retained earnings of X, Y. Okay, so AB group, uh, presumably AB is the parent, so maybe X, Y is a subsidiary. And it wants to look at the retained earnings that we include in the consolidated retained earnings of the AB group. So what will be the retained earnings, if you like, of the subsidiary that are incorporated into that group working for our group retained earnings, which is normally, if memory serves me right, working number five, isn't it? Okay, so there's three things that we need to go through and calculate there, isn't it? Uh, I'll grab yourselves a separate page of paper so that we can go through there and put in all the various bits and pieces, can't we, uh, of information. But if we scroll back up to the top, uh, you can see there you have AB, you have XY, admittedly, uh, we've made a bit of a guess, haven't we, that AB is the parent and XY is the subsidiary, but we will clarify that up in a moment. Uh, but important bits of information that we have, uh, you've got your property, plant and equipment, haven't we? Because uh, we need to work out what the consolidated property, plant and equipment is. Uh, we have the investment in XY, so maybe that's the amount that we pay to acquire the subsidiary. Is that there at $5,000? Uh, we can also see as well, can't we, that we have the net assets, so the equity of the subsidiary at the year end date. So we can then maybe use that to help us with some of the acquisition date net assets. Uh, other useful bits of information confirm what we have already assumed in that AB purchase 75% of XY is that two years ago. Uh, so AB is the parent, XY is the sub, and it tells us there that the retained earnings or the reserves were there at $500 at the acquisition date. So that'll be useful, won't it, to help us work out the net assets at the date of acquisition. So we can then go through there and feed that in to our goodwill calculation. Uh, it gives us a little bit of information there, doesn't it, about the acquisition date. Uh, it tells us that the assets or the property, plant and equipment had a carrying value of 1500 and a fair value is it there of 3,500. So we're going to have to get that fair value in to our consolidated accounts. So the asset is already at 1,500, isn't it? We need to increase it to the 3,500. So is that a fair value increase of the 2,000, okay? Uh, it says that we have a remaining life, is it there of four years? So we will need to depreciate the asset, won't we? Uh, be careful, we bought the subsidiary two years ago, so there will be two years worth of depreciation uh, within the statement of financial position. Uh, it says the group policy is to measure NCI based upon fair value, so not proportionate share of net assets method, it's the fair value method, and it says there that the NCI at that date is 2,600, so it's been given to us. And also as well, it tells us that an impairment review performed on the 31st of December indicated that the goodwill on acquisition of XY had been impaired by 20% of its value. So whatever goodwill we calculate, there will be an impairment of it. And we'll see how that impacts our calculations as we go along. Okay. Uh, so what we can do, if you want to try and get the easy marks, I think the easy marks would be there, wouldn't they, looking at the property, plant and equipment. So property, plant and equipment, we need to go through and add across 100% of P, 100% of S, don't we? 
So 100% of the parent, I think, was it there at 12,000? Um, was it 5,000 on the subsidiary, isn't it? So 100% of P. And 100% of S, isn't it? Okay, so let's just go back, show you where we got those numbers from. There we go. Tick. Tick. Okay. Uh, the issue that you've got now, isn't it, is to do with that fair value adjustment. So when we go through there and look at the fair value adjustment, uh, we're looking at this bit of information here, aren't we? The fact that we need to get the asset from the 1500 up to the 3500. So that difference there, I think, just check, is that the 2000. So that is the fair value adjustment that we have at the date of acquisition. But do just be careful, because what you also have as well is that that asset needs to be depreciated, doesn't it? Yeah, we've depreciated the 1500 within the subsidiaries books, but we haven't depreciated the fell fair value, have we? We need to depreciate that 2000. Is it there? I think we take the 2000, we divide it by four, don't we? But don't forget, uh, yeah, there's two years, isn't it? Cumulatively, there's been two years since the acquisition, so therefore two years worth of accumulated depreciation. Uh, so if you tap that into your calculator, 17, 19, I think, subtract 1, does that give you there 18,000? Okay, uh, so that would be the answer there, the first part of that question. Okay, everybody happy with that bit there, particularly not just the fair value adjustment, but also the depreciation on that fair value. Uh, once you've gone through and done that, let's go through and have a look at, is it the goodwill? So when you're looking at goodwill, you're thinking about your, your standard working three, aren't you? So remember, you're looking there, aren't you, at, is it the cost? You then need to add on the non-controlling interest, which in this situation, I think, was based on the fair value. And then you need to deduct, don't you, your net assets figure from working number two. And then once we've done that, we need to deduct an impairment. And here I think the impairment was 20% of the original goodwill, wasn't it? Okay. Uh, so numbers to go through and, and feed in. Uh, there's some easy ones, some tricky ones. Uh, the easier one, I would have thought, first of all, is the investment. So is that the of 5,000? That's how much we've gone through and paid. So we can stick the 5,000 in there, can't we? Uh, I think we were given the non-controlling interest. So the non-controlling interest at fair value. We have it there, don't we? Is that there? Is that the 2,600? So we can substitute that in that uh, the difficult bit i suppose is looking at the net asset to acquisition isn't it uh, to do so it might be easier to put in a standard working two mightn't it because what you're looking at there is your ordinary share capital and your reserves we look at the year end date we look at the acquisition date as well before we then look at the post acquisition date isn't it uh, so the figures that you take from the year end remember they just come don't they from s's sfp so if we go back there you've got the two figures there haven't we the three thousand and the six thousand five hundred so i can plug in the three thousand I can plug in the 6,500 and remember whatever you have at year end on your share capital is exactly the same as what you have. Is it there at that date of acquisition? Okay, so share capital is that there as 3,000. Okay, 
Uh, we were told the reserves were they there at 500. Okay. Uh, you then have the fair value adjustment at acquisition, which I think was 2000. So, unless you're told otherwise, that figure stays the same at the year end. And don't forget as well, you've also got some depreciation. There we go. Uh, if we go through there and total that up, let me just check. Uh, yep, what we've got, 5,500 is it? 5,500. Okay, that is the... Is it the net asset at the date of acquisition? Uh, so I can put in, is it the 5,500? Uh, let's just go through that. Tap that in on the calculator. Bit more tricky. 5,000 plus 2,600 less 5,500. Does that give me 2,100? Okay. Uh, the impairment, 20% of that. is 420 does that give me the 1000 I think it's 1680 okay that that is your goodwill and that's the answer is it there uh, to the second part of the question 1680 okay uh, so as it stands at this moment in time, we've done the first part, haven't we, in terms of the goodwill uh, and the earlier part, which was to do with property, plant and equipment. Uh, the next one is, I suppose, the, the most difficult, the most challenging. And it's going through there and looking at the, let's rephrase it, the, the retained earnings of X, Y. So the subsidiaries retained earnings that go into the consolidated retained earnings. So we're thinking working number five, and then we'll show you what numbers we, we find from it. So working number five is whereby we take, is it 100% of the parents' retained earnings? So the parents' retained earnings, I think, were there, were they? At 14,000. Uh, we own 75% of the subsidiary. So we need to look at 75% of the post-acquisition retained earnings. So I think, again, just check that we've got the right numbers. I think that you have, is it 10,500 there, which gives you post acquisition, is that there of, is it 5,000? Okay, nice number. Uh, so we can put in 75% of 5,000, which comes, is it there from working to? Uh, 75% of 5,000 is 3,750 and we just need to be a little bit careful don't we because when we've gone through and calculated the goodwill remember the goodwill was based upon a non-controlling interest at fair value so the goodwill that we have calculated is it there 2,100 is referred to isn't it as the full goodwill so that belongs to the parent and also the subsidiary okay uh, so if that's the case that impairment is an impairment of the full goodwill so it's impairing not just the parent share but the NCI share as well so that impairment of 420 we need to give the parent its share is that there as three, one, five? Okay. Uh, so what's the actual question asking us? It wanted, was it the retained earnings of X, Y to be included within the, the group or consolidated retained earnings? Well, that's that figure there, isn't it? 3750 less 315. That's everything to do with X, Y, which gives me three, four, Three, five. Okay. Excellent. So we have there 
Uh, let's just go through and summarise the answer. So you've got 18,000, first of all, for the property, plant and equipment. Be careful, Christopher. Too far. One moment, ladies and gents. We shall get there in a second. Hopefully that will stop. Excellent. Uh, hold on, stop. Whew, that was close. Uh, so you've got there, was it 18,000 for the property, plant and equipment? Uh, was it there, 3, 4, 3, 5? And then on the goodwill, uh, what did we have on the goodwill, if memory serves me right? We had there, was it 1680, wasn't it? So 1680. We'll go there within the goodwill, won't it? It's coming up, it's coming, there it is, right at the very bottom. So 1680. Excellent. Uh, notice the way I haven't put any commas in there just to show you how to, to enter the number uh, within the exam. Okay. Uh, there you go. Uh, any of those requirements could be a, an exam style requirement. Uh, it's unlikely that you'd have those three in succession uh, because they are interlinked, aren't they? And if you get one wrong, then you will get the other one wrong. And there's no continuity marks within this exam, is there? So that'd be a little bit unfair. Okay. So any one of those in isolation could be an exam style question. Uh, keep practicing the questions in whatever question bank it is that you have. And if you've got any questions, you know where we are. Good luck.